Here is a quick run through on some basic animation that we did in class. Uh, this particular thing is just to get you used to seeing how you can animate something in Photoshop's timeline function, which is almost identical to their uh, Adobe Premiere or other type of um, uh, animation generators that they use. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the layers and I'm going to just yank it over here to the side. That way, instead of having this stubby little thing, we can go ahead and see all these different layers kind of in shape. And this is kind of weird, but this is how any video online on YouTube, of the millions of ones that tell you how to make an animated GIF or how to be able to make an animated banner ad, they basically have you working from the bottom up in different layers. So I'm going to turn a lot of these things off to be able to say that what we're going to do very simply is we're going to say that this is going to start with a pale yellow background and the first block of text. And then it's going to be replaced by this pale blue with a second block of text. And then it's going to be replaced by a pink background and a third block of text. And then it's going to be replaced by a fourth background, which is going to end up having something slightly different for the fourth block of text, because you don't have to have everything just in one block. You could have multiple blocks on the thing. And we're going to add a button with a click for more type of a thing. Since this has four basic backgrounds, I'm going to start off assuming that we're going to make a six second animation with each window being open for a second and a half. So four times one and a half equals six, which is pretty standard for a very small banner app, somewhere between six and eight or maybe nine seconds long. So once I've gone ahead and I've built my layers over here, it's always suggested that you try to build out the entire thing beforehand before you start to animate. And I'll show you why kind of toward the end. Um, and yes, this can get kind of confusing, which is why you're going to end up kind of working, uh, turning these layers on and then turning the layers back on, off and on until you've got kind of what you want. Once we're set up with that, we're going to go up to Window and we're going to pull down to Timeline. Now, <clears throat> because I've already been using this, it's going to pop up in the exact timeline format. If for some reason it doesn't, I can't clear my preferences, there'd be a single button right here that says Create Video Timeline. As soon as you click that, it's going to go ahead and pop these things up. Now on its first run through, Photoshop is going to create a five second animation. And that's neat, but again, I said we were going to do six seconds, so we're going to have to override this in a second. Now we come back on in here, and there's something that I should have done before we moved on over, and that is, in order to help make this easier to animate, all the layers or objects that are going to animate, we need to create these as smart objects. The one thing we don't have to do that for is text blocks. Text blocks already are smart objects. And since this is already going to be appearing before we even start, I'm not going to bother to do that one. So I'm going to go back to layer two, and I'm going to come over here to the layer palette, and I'm going to go grab the hamburger icon with this little stacked icon, four different little horizontal lines up here. Pull down and let it go to convert to smart object. You can see this funky little icon that pops up. And I'm going to go ahead and do that there. And I'm going to do that there. So I am doing this on each one of the backgrounds or objects that I'm going to change. And I'm even going to go ahead and do it. Actually, I'm going to throw this one away and we'll pretend that we're going to make that one from scratch because we forgot it before we went going. Okay, great. Now I'm going to come on over here and say the beginning edge of this. Um, this thing is set up to show it's zero. 15F is 15 frames. Since there's 30 frames in a second, that means half of a second, one second. One and a half second two second. Sometimes when you open this thing up, it's set up to showing you in 10 or 20 frames. Like here, it's by moving this little mountain icon from the small mountain to the big mountain. That's the same thing that all Adobe programs use to help you kind of refine the viewing size. This is set up to be 10 frames, 20 frames, 30 frames. Neat. But I think let's just cheat and let's just move this down so everything is already set in half second increments. And I'm going to grab my second layer and I'm going to move it over here until it's at one and a half seconds. So if I'm looking at this little teeny box that says start and duration, I want the start to be at 115, which is one and a half seconds. And I'm going to move the corresponding text layer over, which means my pink one is pulled over until it's at three. Sometimes it's hard to get it right on where you want it to go. Just be patient. Neat thing is, is once you've set something at one stop, when I grab this one over, it's going to magnetically want to grab onto the same spot. So I'm at zero seconds, one and a half second, three second, which means this one has to slide over here until I'm at four and a half seconds. 
415, which then means I can grab the end of this and I can slide this over until I end up reaching. I'm going to go too far and then I'm going to pull back until it stops at ending at 6 exactly. While I'm here, I'll go ahead and fix this edge and I'm going to slide this thing back over too. So again, now that I'm looking at this, I'm at zero, one and a half, three, four and a half, and then it ends at six. Neat. So if I wanted to, um, I think that when this thing normally starts off, it's only showing you about this much at a time. That can be so frustrating to work on. So I would hover around in here until you get this up and down arrows, like I'm seeing right here, and I would pull this up. And then at that point, I can really shrink what I'm working on to be so small because I'm probably not making any refinements right now. And these functions up here act as if they're like a video playhead. So here's the play function. I'm sorry, here's the play function, the fast forward function, the rewind function, the rewind to the end, etc. So I'm just going to hit the play. And I basically have what I've got, what I wanted to go. I'm going to hit the rewind button all the way to the end. I'm going to look in here. Somehow I have the number four. Ah, somehow the number four I had overlooked it completely. That's why it's showing up as this double. I'm going to go grab it, slide it all the way over here so it shows up at about this chunk. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and hit rewind at the beginning. Play. Screen one, screen two, screen three, screen four. And then it stops at six seconds. Neat. So I'm going to rewind all the way to the beginning. And I'm going to go ahead and do a few things. First of all, this is the fade command up here. Click on it. The first thing that's going to happen is that your duration is normally probably set at a standard of 1s or 1 second. That is an eternity on something online. So I changed mine to be 0.25s. And since it's my own laptop and I hit save, it remembers that in perpetuity, which is probably pretty good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just say I want this the second window to just kind of fade on in. So I, after I've adjusted this, I'm going to grab this, slide it over, and let it go. And I get this little ramp showing here, which means it's going to fade. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fade the second one in. Let's go ahead and just click, uh, click anywhere to get that box to disappear. And let me hit play. So what I'm seeing is that when those two things occur, they fade in or dissolve rather than being a harsh kind of a step. Neat. Problem is, I probably need to separate this and have this one just start just ever so after the blue box. So now when I hit play, the blue box appears and then the text, then the text starts to turn in. Neat. I'm going to do kind of the same thing here, except rather than having it fade in, I'm going to have it slide in. So in order to slide that in, I'm going to go to layer three. I'm going to fade, I'm going to slide this pink thing in from, let's just say, from the right over to the left. And I'm going to open up the little hanger here, carrot, so that I can see this. I'm seeing this word transform because I made this be a smart object. If for some, which makes it very easy, which follows all the millions of instructions on YouTube videos on, um, about how to animate in Photoshop online. However, if for some reason I hadn't turned this into a smart object, um, I'm going to have a problem because the transform's not going to be here and it's going to be much more difficult for me to do what I'm going to do next. What I want to do here is come on in and say, look, at this point right here, at the start of this, I'm going to move the transform. This is where I want this to be. Click the transform, stopwatch one time. And then I'm going to say, actually that's incorrect, so I'm going to click on that and hit delete just to get rid of that transform thing. I'm going to say that I want about right here, you can change these after you've made them, so the exact positioning right now is not that important. I'm going to click the transform to say at this second, not at second three, but like at second three plus seven frames, or three and a quarter seconds, I want the pink box to be here. Now I'm going to move this back to the very first frame I see the pink, and I'm going to click the transform button again. But once you've clicked on the line, you don't quick click the stopwatch again. Instead, you move over here and you click this diamond. My original transform diamond is no longer yellow, it turned gray. The yellow just signifies this is the one you're messing with right now. So now I'm going to come up here to edit and I'm going to pull down to free transform. 
I'm going to grab this box and I'm going to start to slide it to the right. And if I move up, ups or up or down, I'm going to hold the shift button down and lock it so that it's just slightly off the edge of the page, but I'm keeping it straight. And I'm going to hit return. So what this is saying is at three seconds, that pink box isn't going to be there. Instead, it's not going to show up until this moment. So let's go back and take a quick peek at this. Here's the blue box. Hey, there comes the pink. And the, the, the text box for layer three, though, just appeared all of a sudden. So let's do the exact same thing for it. Again, text blocks are already smart objects, so I don't need to convert it to one. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to rewind. Go grab the playhead. Slide it around until I get to text block three. I'm going to actually say that I want the text to appear slightly after this thing appears, hit transform, move it back, and again, not at the very beginning of this, but maybe right about here. And again, since it's the second transform on a line, I do not click the stopwatch. Instead, I come over here and click this diamond. And once again, I go up to edit, pre-transform, and I'm going to slide the block. This time, I'm going to do something weird, though. I'm going to move it off to the right side of the page and hit return. So now, this is what we're going to have happening. The block, the blue ones fade in, the pink ones appear, and then that one shows up. And maybe I'm just going to go back on the very last one, and I'm going to just say I want this to just fade in. So I'm going to go click on layer four, which is my coffee photograph. Click on this, the fade little button, black to white. For some reason, you can't figure out what these are, just hover on them, and eventually it'll pop up and say select a transition. Grab the fade command, pop it here. Grab the fade command and pop it on the text box. But now, and then I want to do something else with the number four, and that is I'm going to pop it open. I'm not going to use the fade transition on it. Instead, I'm also going to make this start to fade in slightly after the picture. I'm going to say you get to show up about right here. You get to stay the whole time. But what I'm going to do with you by clicking this carrot open over here is I'm going to say that at this second, right about here, click the transform stopwatch, move back to the very beginning of you, and say click another diamond. But this time I'm going to go up to edit, pull down to free transform, and I'm going to slide this off the Grab that again, slide that so it's off the page. So now this is my basic run through of what I'm getting. White, blue, pink, coffee, that. And one, I want to add one more thing, and that is I need, a, I need a functioning button. And I forgot, let's just pretend I forgot to do this before I got started. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to say right now I want to go get a text box tool. And I'm going to just click it over in this corner. It's going to add a brand new layer on top. I'm going to type click me and make the text much smaller until I've decided it's the size that I want it to be. Let's just say that's perfect. Probably I'll spell that properly. And then I'm going to come back on in and I need to make the button around it. Well, to do that, I have to make a new layer by clicking this new layer icon down here at the bottom of my layer palette. You can hover on it to say create a new layer. Blank layer four. I'm going to go get the rectangle tool up here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle slightly around this. And I'm going to come down to my fill. And then I'm going to adjust this up here and I'm going to find some kind of bright orange. And I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to pull down the fill with the foreground color, not white or black or something like that, which is going to grab me my orange. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the click me text and shove it so that it's on top. And maybe I'm going to adjust the size of that, the placement of that a little bit. So the reason I kind of pretended to forget this is I just wanted to show you where it added the layer functions in the timeline. And that is it put it after everything, which is typically what ends up happening. So it put it way out here to the right Wow, it's going on for like five extra seconds at the very end of the whole thing. Remember, I wanted to end it right here at second six. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and manually move my box 
to here. And I'm just going to say, just do a simple fade. I'm going to add the click me text slightly after that with again the fade at the beginning. I'm going to adjust the right ends of these so that they end at second six, like everything else. Actually, these aren't even quite where I wanted them to. There, second six. Six. Uh, and then I'm also going to do something else that's kind of weird. I'm going to make another new layer and I'm going to go ahead and get a rectangle box and I'm going to draw it slightly bigger than the orange box. And I am going to go up to edit and I'm going to pull down to fill and I'm going to fill this with white. And as soon as I've done that, I'm going to hit command D to deselect everything. I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. No, way too much. Just visually, I'm looking maybe about 10 pixels. Click OK. I want to move that below the orange one, though. Once again, I'm going to have this pop up and I'm going to have it appear here. Fade. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have it not end at six seconds like everything else. I'm going to have it end right in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a fade on the end of that thing too. But again, now this weird thing, that is my little type, uh, kind of a glow. So now let's see what we've got going on. Rewinding it all the way to the beginning, either by dragging it manually or by hitting the rewind to the beginning button. Hit play. Yellow and white, blue, pink with the slide, dissolve with the move, and then I got the little the button to show up and last the whole time, but because I chose to do a fade at the beginning and a fade at the end and have that appear ever so slightly afterwards, I'm getting basically the glow of this button to kind of pop up, which does make it much more clickable and functional by doing something like that. You can adjust that seemed to go too fast. And now the neat thing is, is that once you've done this, I probably am thinking those are kind of slow up at the beginning. There's a lot of things happening. Or maybe I don't like how slow that number four popped up. If that's the case, let's just take a look at that. Ugh. Let's just say that the number four is appearing so much slower than I thought it would. You can always go grab this transform button, the second one, to say, hey, why don't we speed you way up? Move it right there. Now this thing is going to just zing in. Or again, if you wanted to. Um, if that's not what you were looking for, come back on up here and we could make this last forever. But you have the ability, once you've put things down with transform markers, there, the number four is taking forever to pop up. Okay, again, you know, I really hate that, so I'm going to move it back. Maybe not quite as zippy in as that, but not as slow as I was originally starting. Maybe somewhere about like this. And I decide that that's really what I want. Perfect. And now that I've done that, I definitely want to make sure that I save this. Um, there's a layered Photoshop file. Problem is, the person who sees this thing now has to have Photoshop in order to be able to view it. So that's not the format that you need to be able to save this out to send it to somebody else. Uh, do keep in mind that the first couple times you do the animation in Photoshop, it looks really chunky. The more times you hit repl replay or rewind and play, it definitely starts to smooth out. But in order to send this thing to somebody, you get a file. Um, let's see, export, render to video. You make sure that up here it is H.264 for the format and the preset is high quality. Hit render. And that's going to take a few seconds, even on the pretty fast. All right, neat. It's already done. I'm going to come out here and so where is this thing rendering to? I should have put it in the same folder, so let me go back to double check that. Uh, 
export, render the video. Oh, it's supposed to be putting in my downloads folder. Well, let me just change the folder until it's the desktop. Choose. Render it a second time. All right, let's go find it out here. It's an MP4 file. So now I can open up the video of it here and hit play. And in this particular thing, it should look much, much smoother because this is really a video replay type of a function thing. And then that way you can turn in just this uh, video MP4 file, which is only in this particular case, uh, 1.8 megabytes compared to the layered Photoshop deep file being eight megabytes. So that is a simple way to be able to do some animation in Photoshop.